Okay, God bless each of you guys that come on. This is going to be a part two to the video that we shared the other day. Um, release control. The Lord has shared and showed me. First off, <clears throat> there are many of us that are being tested. I think there, as the gathering of the remnant has begun, it's almost like there's this spiritual unity that the Lord is allowing us to see in the reaping of blessing, uh, in the reaping of promises, in the reaping of cr the crossing over into the fullness of rest, the revelation of the fullness of rest here on earth, which is in Christ. Um, we know that we go through these seasons what it seems to be is is we are advancing right but in reality the kingdom of god is within us everything is within us the spirit of god is within us the heart of the father is within us and the de and the spirit of god searches the depths of the father's heart and gives us revelation gives us understanding gives us wisdom in turn that that wisdom that truth that is revealed to us frees us from different things in different seasons of our life. Many of us have been tested for, for a while now. When the test comes, we can begin to see, um, we can begin to see the changes start moving into place. We can begin to recognize um, that the Father, that, that, that God, it seems as though he becomes a little distant, but in reality, he just, there is a, uh, a place where there is a, he becomes silent and not completely silent. Silent in a sense where he knows, uh, excuse me, where we know that he is present. He has revealed to us that this is a test. He comforts our souls in knowing that this is a test. And so as we as we continue to be stronger, as we continue to grow, as we continue to mature, the tests are hard. The tests almost seem harder and harder each time. But your spiritual senses are heightened. Your faith has increased. Your faith has become stronger. Your trust in him has become stronger. So even though the tests are harder and it seems as though the enemy is attacking in a in a, a a stronger way or a deeper way it seems as though we actually recognize we are able to recognize sorry there's a lot going on in the background distractions are subtle distractions are a subtle way a subtle tactic of the enemy and distractions can be anything but the spirit of god is within us so even this we we can be strengthened in these things this is this is the first time uh in this in this in this ministry where before it used to be so isolated it, had, it used to have to be in my eyes so perfect i used to have to have no interruptions there was so much uh, uncomfortableness and so much fear and stage fright and all of these things that i was receiving and attaching on to myself that the lord had to free me where now it's like Many of us are releasing the truth, the anointing, the power of God. We are releasing the power of God in, in our places of home, in our places of motherhood, in our places of, of work, wherever this looks like. So what's happening is that this is my ministry right now. My home is one of my ministries, one of the ministries that the Lord has called me to do. And one of those, and, and at home, there is a lot of action a lot of commotion, a lot of hard pressing. And the Lord has taught me, as you guys know, as I've testified on here, how to find the peace in the chaos. So if this is your first time on the channel and you hear a bunch of stuff in the background, um, we have an elderly, we have my grandma and she's elderly and she is in the battle of her life, the fight of her life. And she is battling this, uh, these, this she's going through restoration she's going through healing progressively which is what the lord has declared and um 
this has been this has been a, a, a challenging but beautiful um, season of our lives we have been strengthened in this we have grown in this we have matured in this we have been brought together in this to support one another um, it's just a lot of beautiful things so but there is a lot of commotion there is a lot of background noise and this is our house I don't have to be ashamed of it um, this is my family this is where the Lord has called me this is my ministry um, we're called wherever he calls us to be planted um, that is where we are called to release the light you know and many of us are just now learning that there is so much more to the depths of the heart of God to the, to, to the truth that God wants to reveal to us the mysteries that he wants to reveal to us that we are only now finding out that there is more to the spiritual realm just like when in the book of Revelation when the angel tells John come up here I have many things to show you we see that Paul talks about this where he couldn't speak to some of the churches um, because they were still quarreling and, and in the flesh um, battling the things of the flesh where he couldn't speak to them about mature things about spiritual things and this is where the Spirit of God is taking us now this is this is this is where we are and many people are being awakened to this truth to the truth many of us are being freed from these um, these patterns that we have been taught even in religion and even in the world and we are breaking free from these these lies they're lies so many of us are being tested okay and one thing that I can recognize I wanted to share this briefly because it is really important for us to begin as we begin to grow we will begin to see the tactics of the enemy. You can actually begin to see. It's just like if you're playing, if you've ever played sports, um, you play up against a, 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 a tough team, a hard team. A lot of times, um, sometimes coaches will have you um, watch videos of the opposing team so that you can learn some of their ways so that we would be able, we wouldn't be caught off guard. We would be able to address um, their weaknesses, their strengths, and we would be able to um, hit that head on. Well, as we go through these seasons of testing, we can also see that the enemy comes um, in ways that are, are similar each time. He comes with lies, he comes with confusion, he comes with the opposite of the promise that the Lord has gave you. He comes with scripture in ways of condemnation and accusation and guilt. Um, and you, and you, as you continue, as the Lord continues to allow you to be tested because the Lord does allow us to be tested. It is for our good. It is through the suffering, through trial. It is, the scripture says it is through suffering that Christ Jesus, his obedience was perfected. It was through Jesus' suffering where that his obedience was perfected. So an obedience is it's an, it's a mighty act of love. When we choose the Father, that is obedience. When you choose the way of the Lord, that is obedience. So the Lord will allow these trials and these testings, and it is for our good. We know that when, if we know that when a season comes, a season of testing comes, you know that reward is on the other end of this. And the rewards come in many different ways with the Lord. Sometimes it'll come in greater ways of communication. Sometimes it'll come in uh, supernatural riches. You'll begin to see the presence of God in greater measure. And sometimes there's multiple rewards. Sometimes you'll manifest physical rewards and spiritual rewards. So. When the enemy began this this most recent uh, season of testing, this one came, they always come with doubt and confusion. The enemy comes with doubt and confusion. He tries to get us to doubt our faith, to, to, to waver in our faith, to grow weary and to waver. And we already know the, the, the usual things he comes with is accusation, condemnation. So this time the lord revealed to me this is where before the lord would nurture me just like an infant 
I would be nurtured. I would be like an infant. You gotta keep, you have to breastfeed them. There's a lot of nurturing that is involved with a small baby, a newborn baby. As we begin to grow into a, 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 a stronger baby and into, um, you know, maybe a, a crawling baby and then a walking baby, the Lord begins to, it's almost like a child. Once they start to walk, a mother will, will hold them by the hands. And then you'll release them to let them walk for themselves. This is what it is. So for many years, the Lord would nurture me. He would give me promises. And he would allow them to come, some of them to come to pass swiftly. So that I would see my faith would grow and it would increase and I would have these testimonies that I would write down from the very beginning he had me write them down and this was a huge tactic that the Lord helped me with to write down the miracles that God had done in my life the the, the moments that he was uh, he was mighty the moments that he had the promises that he had spoken over me the prophetic promises all of those things are it's so important for us to write them down so that we could remember because it is so easy for us to forget. We forget we got so much going on and so many things that the Lord is doing that sometimes it can just, we forget. But in those moments of testing where the enemy comes to have my faith tested, to get me to a place where I doubt the Lord or I doubt his presence in my life or I doubt the promises those were the greatest things pulling out those books and those notepads where I had writ written the miracles and the mighty hand of God in my life. The promises that had already come to pass. The enemy is coming and attacking many of us with lies. Many of us are being accused right now. Many of us are questioning if the promises were even spoken. Many of us are questioning our faith. The, the, and this comes in different, they're, they're in different levels. The enemy, you are in a test. The Lord is allowing you. You know, because the Lord, even when the Lord goes, I don't want to say completely silent because he doesn't go completely silent. The Lord has always reassured me this is a test. There is a knowing when those moments where the Lord, I, I'm, I'm seeking the Lord and I'm not getting the, the pre, His presence as strongly as I usually would, He always confirms me, confirms to me that this is a test. He, he, he'll give me a reminder. Whenever I start to, to, to grow weak or weary, He'll give me a reminder, it's a test. We are being tested. I have seen Right now, somebody really important, really close to me in my life and in my walk. She's a mighty vessel and I'm not going to put it out on blast. But she's being attacked so strongly right now. And I know that many of us are lifting her up in prayer. But the enemy is coming with accusations against her. With lies against her. With condemnation against her. And this is a mighty vessel of God. But this is all of us in these moments of testing. Which is why it is so important for us to be united and gathered because we lift one another up and we can see it. We can see it. Sometimes it's easier us for us to see the issue or the problem when we're not in that problem, like from the outside, because personally I'm being tested hard too. But praise God in this place of, of faith, in these, in these lies, I'm gonna show you what the Lord has used to strengthen me. When we are in these seasons of testing, there is no need to make any sudden decisions. Unless you're 100% sure it's the Lord telling you to do something. In these seasons of testing, the enemy wants us to make swift decisions. For many of us, he is coming with confusion. He is coming as an angel of light that I have never experienced before. In ways that I know that only the Lord has spoken to me. But I have discerned by the grace of God towards the end of this, well, toward in, where I am in this testing right now, that this is, this, is, this, this is the first time where I have recognized the enemy to come in the way and in the methods that the Lord has spoken to me in. 
which is why the Lord has showed me there's no need for sudden movements and to wait on him. I tell you, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. I was actually hindering some of my promises, one specifically, from coming to pass because of my control. My control, my desire to control the situation, and this is how I was doing it. I was trying to figure out what the outcome would be before the Lord revealed it in his perfect timing. When we take control and desire to seek out things that the Lord has not called us to seek out, seek out because the Lord has confirmed, I'm talking about specifically, the Lord confirmed to me this is the first time where the Lord was taking me in this step-by-step -step trust. And because it was so new to me, I was, I was, I was addressing this promise like I had other promises where other revelations were coming and I would receive these revelations and it was like, oh, it's so beautiful because I would see it before it came to pass and then boom, it would manifest. But the Lord, as we continue to increase, as we continue to go up, he will speak to us in different ways. He will communicate to us in different ways. He will strengthen these ways of communication by us exercising these ways of communication. And I have an example of, of a couple examples where the Lord says, I want you to exercise this. Like when I have the dialogue, um, when I start to speak, the, to speak to the Lord before, I always did it in my mind. So it was actually for a long time, it was, it was, although I was getting stronger and I was able to discern better and better the Lord's um, direction versus my thoughts versus the enemy's lies, um, the Lord had directed me in this new way of communication where he wanted me to speak it aloud. He wanted me to speak both sides aloud, his and mine, so that I could be strengthened in which thoughts were mine and which thoughts were his. And he specifically told me to exercise this, that I would be strengthened in this. That's just one way. When the Lord wants to communicate a different way, and a lot of times I would go back to the old methods of communication, and that was fine. But the Lord was ready to take me to new levels. So he would have the grace and the patience with us to continue to speak to us. But he will actually slowly, gradually be taking us out, out of that way of communication because he wants to strengthen us. So the Lord revealed to me, this is the first time where the promise, he made it 100% clear that the promise was here those were the lord's words and when the lord says that something is here that can mean today that can mean tomorrow that can mean a month from today that can mean three years from today because when the lord says something is here or soon his we just have to we just have to know that his timing is perfect and when the, t the Lord revealed to me that it was here, I literally thought it was here. And I didn't realize until after growing weary, one month passing, two months passing. And I realized after that, by the mercy of the Lord and the Holy Spirit working within me, that he was building my self-control. Because now the Lord has revealed that the promise is here. When, when you know something is here, like when you know you're about to receive something, you get this anxiousness within you, this excitement within you that you sometimes you can't contain yourself, right? The Lord wanted me to show me that even as those emotions came, we're not to be led by those emotions. He wanted me to have victory and to be strengthened through, those, through that anxiousness, through that excitement, through those emotions, which are valid, and which he gave me. He didn't, I even got to a point where I was like, Lord, it would, it would have just been easier for you not to tell me anything and allow the promise to come. Why, go, why let me go through this, 
this excitement that turned into, you know, Lord, did I even hear you right? Yes. And it was all for my good. Because the self-control that is required when you know something is here that you've waited years for. Our God is perfect and his ways are perfect. He's a master. He's a, he, he creates masterpieces. And he was building my self-control, my patience in the midst of this excitement. To where again I had to surrender it. But I found myself, before I resurrendered this, I found myself seeking to know, seeking to find out how this was going to come to pass. And because I had never taken this complete trust in the Lord like this, like this before, where he literally wanted to unveil it step by step to me. Because he's so excited for us. He is so excited for us. And when we trust him, there is like, there is this, you perceive this joy in the Lord, this joy that he is more excited than you to give you your future, to unveil to you the things in, in, in the process of, of life, to give you these, these steps of, of gifts that he has along the way for you of surprises he is more excited to fulfill his promises to you than you are but i'm going to tell you where i was wrong and how he showed me i was wrong and what we need to do in this error as he gave he gave me the example too so if we are in ignorance look the lord is so gracious he's so merciful there was absolutely 100% no condemnation, no judgment with the Lord. But I asked the Lord, I, I continually ask the Lord, especially when there's something like this, where the Lord has revealed that there's, there's a promise and, and I've never experienced where he's like, it is now, now is the time. That's not even soon, it is here. So when he said it is here and it's not here, I'm wondering, okay, Lord, what am I doing wrong? Is there something that I'm missing? Is there something that I'm doing to delay? And I was. By me desiring to have control of the outplay of this promise, that was wrong. That I was actually delaying this because that sense of control, that desire of control, that 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 will, that will of control to to for me to figure things out, for me to search. I was searching social medias. I was searching. I was doing a lot of investigating that that I was not called or required to do. That's not trust. That's not faith. That's control. That's my will versus God's will. And he showed me that I was wrong. That I wasn't trusting him. So I had to turn from that. I resurrendered it. The day that we made the first video and and even even after that sometimes i catch myself and i'm like nope i don't have to search i don't have to look even when he's giving me he, he as of recently ever since i made that video and i surrender i re-surrendered this i've actually received more revelation and then i would catch myself attempting to go and seek further into that that nugget that he gave me and it was like no there's no need for me to search further. He, this is what he's given me right now. I'm going to treasure this. This is the new, um, this is the new step of revelation that he's given me. I'm going to treasure this. It's not my. It's not our will. It's his will. Is that really what we're doing? Are we really allowing his will to be done, or are we searching out how this promise is going to come to pass? Are we searching out, you know? So control is actually out of God's will. Control is the opposite of faith. When one desires to control a specific outcome that the Lord has not desired for you to be, for, to release. It's just like Eve. And this is what he, he revealed to me. That's the example is disobedience. 
Um, when the Lord wants to keep withhold something from us, this is why it's important for us to wait on the Lord in his perfect timing and in his perfect will. Everything will be revealed. And this is difficult. It is difficult. Complete release. Complete release of any control. It's hard. And he knows it. And he's patient with us and he's kind and he's gracious and he's merciful. And every time we resurrender, he's pleased. But I was keeping that promise from, I was delaying that promise by my control. My desire to know the outcome um, when God did not want to reveal the outcome. He wanted to reveal. And I had decided early on in this, in this promise that the Lord asked me, as of recently, the Lord had asked me, can I surprise you? I agreed with his will. I agreed with his will. So it doesn't matter how many times you have to resurrender it. It doesn't matter how many times you have to catch yourself and keep yourself from trying to find out facts along the way. He is gracious and he is merciful, but we could be delaying our promises. And this is one way. And I'm just sharing you my experiences, sharing with you my experiences, because I know that our testimonies, especially the ones where from darkness to light, all of our mistakes where we are corrected and we are humbled and we are brought back into truth, all of these experiences strengthen one another. This is the way, it's just the way that it is. If we can keep somebody from stepping on the same landmines that one stepped on, isn't that wisdom? Because all of this is, is we're like these front liners in truly being led by the spirit. I really, I know this, I believe this. This is why there's, I don't find so much that is spoken on being led even in the scriptures what paul talked about to the churches he never really went in depth about it what he revealed was that that there was more 100 percent, there's more the depths of god are infinite the spiritual realm is there's more we know that paul couldn't go into depth about this stuff so the lord is ready to reveal to us who align with his will for our lives to experience how to truly be led by the spirit of God in this age in this day the enemy is coming and attacking many of you guys with accusation and condemnation and he is lying just wait he's confusing many of us and it doesn't matter if we wait on the Lord he can come with all of the lies. You're going to come out victorious because of Christ. You are already victorious. You resist. Continue to resist. You resist waiting. Just wait on the Lord. Just wait. Just wait. He comes with a lie. He comes with, even, even if it's a revelation, you believe it's from God, just wait. Take it in, write it down, just wait. I've actually, clarity has come as I relinquish control. As I surrendered control, clarity has come. The enemy's still trying to attack. He's still sending in these like counterfeits as they call them these days. This counterfeit, these lies. Just wait on the Lord. And remember, even if, just like I was wrong in this desire to have control of the outcome and even try to figure out what the outcome was be, would be, in this in this path in this journey that the lord wants he has kept this he has not revealed this to me for a purpose because he wants to build my trust and my faith through this even that error that wrong the lord was so gracious with me and so so gentle and so quiet that i almost missed it ask the lord many of us do not have because we do not ask ask the lord what's going on just 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 uh just come 
just come again. Sometimes we forget with so much going on. We think like, okay, the Lord's going to, the Lord's going to correct me when I need correction. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes he's, he's so merciful and so gracious that sometimes he's, it, you can ask about something specifically and he will bring it he will bring the answer, the correction specifically for that. And then you know because you've asked him specifically. So you're actually waiting for a correction. You're, we're waiting. And it wasn't until I asked him, Lord, am I, am, is there something that I'm doing? Because when in the, I know my God, when my God says that something's here, it's here. And my God, my God could prolong it. But if he wanted to prolong it, he wouldn't have said it is here. So there must be something. There must be something. Because, and we have the example of the children, the Israelites, when they go around and around the mountains. They never allowed the miracles, the hand of God, to strengthen their faith. So the Lord will continue to have the same tests come around until we are victorious. And then we move on. I have, in, I have I have experienced this. This is the way that the Lord has desired to test me. In the same manner as the Israelites. In his grace and in his mercy, he will keep bringing the test around. But he doesn't desire us to keep going in circles around the mountain. He wants us to be victorious. So if, we've, if we're going in circles, it's time to stop and say, Lord, what am I doing to delay this? Help me to know, to recognize it, that I could lay it at your feet. Because we already know, if you're still on this channel, it's because the Lord is breaking you free from the molds. We already know that your desire is to please the Lord. We already know that your desire is to live the purpose of God in your life. We already know that your desire was to be refined and sanctified through the process of sanctification through the Holy Spirit and the Word. So we already know that you're not one who desires to continue to reject the ways of God. And because of that, sometimes his gentleness and his, his, his voice is so quiet because he's so merciful and gracious and loving with us that we can miss it. So ask him. Ask him what's going on. I pray that this helped you. I've realized that as he continues to give me these experiences, as he continues to take me through these um, experiences, these testimonies, these daily testimonies, this is where the rich, the nuggets are. And he wants me to share them because this is the evidence that our God is near, that our God is here that our God is with us. That our God desires to speak to us. That our God uses creation to do it. So many people have been taught that you, it, is, it is ungodly to seek a sign from God. The only time in scriptures that that is true is when he spoke to the Pharisees because their hearts were hard against him. His, they, they, um, their desire to seek a sign was wicked in the situation that they desired a sign from God. All throughout scripture, signs were given to God's people. It's actually very common and nothing has changed. This is such a powerful part of our walk with the Lord is his presence in our everyday life. God bless you guys.